What up, Replay Crew? Hopefully you guys are having an amazing day. Facebook, YouTube, if you're out there, and you guys want our new guide that's coming out, it's how to get clients without spending money on Facebook ads. Just drop an emoji, and we will make sure that that is given to you. Now, I want to actually talk about three steps that you can do to go out there and either get your first client or that you can you do to get your next client if you've already gotten them. And this is something that's really, really important for a lot of agency owners, a lot of marketers, a lot of business owners who are looking to build really the business and, and, the, and the life of their dreams, right? That's really what we're talking about here. And I love that digital marketing and being an agency owner and providing these services can give you that opportunity. And I think that it's, uh, it's so important and powerful for, um, for, for people to really realize <clears throat> the power that they have in being able to, to do this, right? I think that some people just look at it as doing social media or some people just do it, <clears throat> look at it as doing Facebook ads. And, and I think that it can be that and it can be just an easy way to make money from your home and, and it can be a, a way to really make a lot of money. I mean, I think that it's a very, very profitable business. And on the other hand, I think that there is a great opportunity for people to really make an impact for other business owners and to really make an impact in their own life. I mean, I think that that's probably the, the number one thing, <clears throat> excuse me, that I am most excited about uh, when it comes to, to building a digital, digital agency is the, the lifestyle that it provides for me and, and obviously the passion that I have for, uh, for doing it. So let's get into it. And I'm going to tell you the three steps. Let's just dump right in. I'll give you the three steps ahead of time so you guys aren't waiting too long for it. The first step, right, is you got to understand who your business owner is. You got to understand, uh, you got to identify who that, who that person is, who you're going to be serving. The second thing that you have to do is you have to when I, when I say, I think the step number one is identify. Step number two is understand who that person is, right? That's the second thing is you have to, it's a separate step, right? Is really going in and talking to these people. And the third is, is reaching out to them. So <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that we can get everybody who's supposed to be on this video on as well. Uh, I'm going to share this in all the right places. So if you guys have any questions and you guys are happen to be catching this on the replay, you guys can um, throw those down there and I'll come back and answer those on the replay as well. I wanna make sure that everybody has this. So skip ahead a couple of seconds if you guys are uh, catching this on the replay so that you guys uh, don't have to watch me do this uh, as well. The second thing is that if you guys are hopping on um, and are not part of Chatbots 101, make sure that you guys are in that group because that's where we are going to be hosting uh, all of our just content in a way that you can uh, go back and, and watch it on your own time and in a way that's very easy to find. So uh, this is in all the right places. So let's get into it, right? And let's really start talking about the first step, right? Step number one is how do you, is step number one is identifying your your customers, right? Really, I picking a customer I think is, is so important for people to to do because when you try and serve everybody, you end up serving nobody. And I hear that so many times when people are starting in their in, in whatever kind of business, they, they say, I wanna I wanna help everyone. And 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 if you just try and help everybody, you're not gonna end up helping anybody because no one is going to respond to that. No one's going to relate to that. <clears throat> the vanilla personality, the vanilla uh, corporations, the vanilla brands these days, they, they go by the wayside, right? If you think about the Walmarts, they're going out of business. The Toys R Uses are going out of business. Why? Not just because of their retail, because they don't have a brand. People don't actually, they don't, they're not personally connected and personally invested with these people. So in any case, it's really, really important for you as a business owner to decide who it is that you want to serve, right? You really need to get clear about who it is that you're serving. So Johnny, what's going on? Guys, if you guys are just hopping on, um, let me know who's here. I, uh, I always appreciate knowing who's, who's on because I want to make sure that if you guys are taking the time to join live that you get your questions answered. I know that that's one thing that I, I kind of realized is like, why do people 
Like, why do people hop on live, right? Like, the DVR is everyone's favorite thing, and it's so that you can ask questions. So if you guys got questions, throw them down there. And I got, uh, I got it right here on the screen so we can talk about it. I'm not going to be using any diagrams. It's just me, my ugly mug, and the stupid panda hat, uh, and, uh, and some business 101, okay? So <clears throat> let's talk about identifying a niche, right? I think about when people go, well, how do I pick a niche? How do I pick an industry? People always, you know, like that's a number, like people's number one, and it should be their number one thought is like, who am I going to serve? And I think that there's two ways to decide this, right? The first way to decide is something that you're good at, right? Something that you have experience or something that you have some sort of expertise. I find that there's a lot of people who actually, um, there's a lot of people who what they what they do is they they are just good at at their their craft right they don't they don't really love necessarily help they don't like have a passion for car dealerships but man they're really really good at putting a marketing campaign together for them and there's nothing wrong with that right because I think that there's that's a great expertise and a great skill to be able to leverage so you can you can find if you've had some experience in a particular field, maybe you were a plumber growing up, or maybe your uncle was a plumber and you know you helped him out on the job, or maybe um, I don't know, like you know maybe you played sports growing. I mean, I don't know. You can really draw from whatever experience that you had, right? And you can utilize that and leverage that so that now you have a starting place, and now you're not starting from scratch. Because if you're going into right, step number two is you really have to understand. Um, you, you really have to understand your customer for lots of reasons, right? Because if you're going to the third step is you're going to outreach them, but if you don't understand them and you don't, you don't really know the niche and you don't know the industry, you're not going to really know what to talk about. Right. And, and you can definitely start by asking questions and that's what I would encourage you to do is if you don't know and you don't understand the pain points of your niche, if you don't understand the pain points of your, your industry, then the first step that you've got to do is you've got to go out and talk to those people. You've got to go out there and ask them questions. You've got to you know, understand them, shadow them for a day, interview them, hop on a phone call, take them to coffee. And, and before you start pitching, right, really start looking to, uh, to understand. So the first way is that, uh, you know, that we talked about, right? Step number one is you got to identify a niche. And we talked about building it off of expertise and experience. And the second thing that you, second way that you can do it is building it off of your passion, right? Building it off of your passion. And then step number two was understanding them, right? So a lot of times if you already have experience or you already have a passion for these these people or for this industry, it makes step number two a lot easier or a lot of times step number two, you don't necessarily have to do as as much, right? I'm gonna, do you guys mind? I, it's like, I have so much dust in my room. I cleaned it yesterday, if you guys would've known. Like, look at this, cleaned it. So I got some feng, feng shui in here, right? Because it was just too much. But now all this dust is kicking up and I'm like, it's, I get my allergies and it's killing me. So hold on, we're gonna get some planes, but, but look at that, the plane's coming right now. But I'll be able to breathe and won't be sneezing all over the place. So forgive me for that, guys. I uh, I apologize. Daniel says, why the panda hat? Uh, you know, guys, there's no good answer for the panda hat. One day I decided to wear the panda hat, and then the next day I didn't, and people asked me where the panda hat was. And so I wore the panda hat the next day, and uh, I haven't took it off. So there you go. Um, that's the real only story. And because people always ask why the pan hat. So it's a good conversation starter, you know? I'm kind of I'm kind of confident with myself enough to to take that uh a little bit. Anyways, great question. Uh Daniel. Maria, what's going on? Guys, if you guys are hopping on and uh I don't I can't I can only see the people who comment. So let me know who's catching this live. And of course, if you made it through the replay this far, you're an angel. So I love you. Uh let's talk about okay, so let's rehash, okay? Those of you guys who are hopping on live. Step number one, identify your niche, right? You really have to pinpoint and you really have to target them for lots of reasons. And these things I didn't really cover, but not only does it make it easy for you to reach out to these people, but then after that, you're able to establish some credibility. You're able to establish some, like we talked about, expertise. You're able to get some case studies. You're able to get um, some testimonials, and then all of a sudden you start to develop, you know, people start giving you referrals. You start to to be known for, for stuff, right? And um, I think that that is so 
invaluable for new business owners to be able to start to generate clients on an incoming basis, right? I was just thinking about that today. Like we do so much in cold, uh, cold outreach, right? We do so much in, in, um, like, like outbound, right? Although I do like a Facebook live every single day. And although like I've got a little bit of a personal brand or whatever, whatever, whatever is like, it's, it's zero, it's zero. Like, I mean, yeah, there's a, I, we have a Facebook group that's thriving, but the majority of my agency is built through, uh, cold outreach, right. And just outbound, just, just outbound methods because we can't rely on, on just getting referrals. We can't rely on just having people come in off of our Facebook lives. We have to really go out there and create a system that's going to generate those things on autopilot. So first step number one is identify, okay? Step number two is you got to understand. And so there's a, a research process that is really, really, really important for you to be able to have success at the highest level. And I think, as I think about it, I'm wondering like, hmm, why aren't we having the success that we want right now in some of the niches that we're going after and some of the industries? Because after you start to build this, like the great thing is, is that you can expand and you can pick multiple niches and multiple industries. I would be advise you to be careful, right, about what it is, you know, how many you go after. But at, at first, I would encourage you to start with one, and, and then once you start to master one and get one locked down and one's rolling, well, then you can expand to the next one. But I'm thinking about some of the niches that we're going after right now, and we've kind of skipped this step. We've kind of skipped this this in-between step where we don't know necessarily if we understand like their pain points or their challenges. And uh, so I think I'm gonna have to talk with with my with my team and our, we have an executive call today. Uh, so I'll, I'm gonna bring that up at, at our executive meeting. But that's really, really valuable is knowing what your clients want, right? Knowing what your customers want. So uh, let's see, who's here? Dan hopped on, Jimmy hopped on. Uh, Daniel says website of your agency. So the agency is, uh, I'll give you a, something a, a little bit better uh hd marketing one so you can go there and that's probably the best place to find info about us um and what you can do so let's keep going uh new zoom video features that's interesting uh maybe that's why my zoom wasn't working is because there's new features that are coming out but step number one Identify. Step number two, understand, okay? Let's talk about all the ways in which you can do research. And there's lots of lots of ways in which you can do market research. The most important thing is that you've got to do it. And so when I think about it, I'm going to be like, like for me, my number one thing that I, I, we're gonna, I'm going to have our, our sales team do is just have luncheons with, with, with people in the niche. And I'd, I'd be willing to pay $35, $45 for a lunch with, uh, you know, not only a potential client, but really so that they can understand that we can understand what's going on in their business and what's going on in their industry. And I think that that's a really, really valuable aspect of, of being able to not only pitch people, but then how do you hook them, right? You have to be able to offer them something that they want. And so one of the keys of excelling through email prospecting, one of the keys of excelling through LinkedIn prospecting, one of the keys of excelling through cold calling or really any any cold outreach right is 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 understanding and and not only anticipate right it's really anticipating what the client's going to need but it's it's like you 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 already knowing what they want right like like let's let's talk about it so let's go through like the, if you already guys already have a niche picked out like let me know um, and we can kind of walk through what that would be. Let's, but like we've had a lot of experience obviously in the real estate in industry, right? And so we've had, you know, for them, they want, they want buyers, right? But then like we thought about it and what we really understood was that real estate agents, that not only do they want leads, they just want, they, they not only want leads, but they wanted qualified leads, right? Like a lot of them didn't actually want to go through and follow up with all of these people. We kind of learned these things the hard way. And so now, the reason that we stumbled on chatbots and, and created, you know, some of these systems for real estate agents is because they are that that's like that's what they wanted, right? And it was really a, a result of understanding the 
uh, the industry and understanding the niche. Because some people you get them leads and then they know what to do with them, but some but what are like leads are different to every person, right? So it's just like you know you if you just focus on getting people like website views, right? Like think about that, right? Like would you just focus on getting someone website views? Like that's kind of like the silliest thing. Like who cares about how many people land on your website? Like what is it? What does that matter, right? It's like how many people are actually doing the thing that you want them to do. So when 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 you guys are are pitching anything. Um, it's really about conversion strategies, right? I think that that's, that's like, like when people ask me like, what, what am I selling? I'm always selling more conversions, whatever those conversions are. Oh no, they're, they're, they're doing construction. Hold on. All right. looks like we got a question in here. In terms of marketing, online marketing, what do you think is a good source of learning materials? You said in business school, but it's just marketing one of the textbooks. He's starting an insurance agency for millennials in Spain. So Daniel, I, I love that question, man. And uh, thank you for, for dropping that. If you guys have, uh, if you guys have any questions, share them, uh, share them down there. But um, let's, let's talk about that because I think that that's a really valuable, really valuable question. So um, let's break that down. Source of learning. Uh, I had a, I got a business degree, and uh, I got a business degree in marketing. I uh, finished up in 2013, and um, I didn't learn nothing about how to run an uh, online business, nor did I necessarily learn how to run a business, right? I got a marketing degree, and they taught me the basics of product and price and point and place, and it's like, but the thing was is that all of those things were built from a paradigm prior to the internet. All of those things were built from a time before um, before the internet, before social media. And new channels and new platforms are being created every single day for you to be able to get the word out and you to be able to market your business. Now, on the other hand, not only do you have to learn how to create whatever kind of insurance, uh, whatever kind of insurance you have to create, right? Like there's that side of the coin. You've got to be a good baker. You've got to create, you know, you got to, you got to make good donuts if you're a baker, whatever it is. You've got to, you've got to figure out what your donuts are and you got to create that. But then there's also the business side of it. And I think that this is something that a lot of young business owners underestimate is the actual practical execution that's required to run a business and prior like like if you think about businesses prior to to you know i don't know 2013 right 20 in the last basically in the last decade people have spawned there's been more solopreneurs than ever right and so in, if you were a solopreneur and prior to 2010, you were like essentially a badass. You were like a ninja. You were a Swiss army knife, right? It was, it was kind of un, unheard of, right? Or it definitely was not the norm. Not unheard of, but definitely was not the norm. And the reason is because you are, are taking on so many more responsibilities than just doing what you say you provide to your clients, right? It's not only what you provide to your clients, the baker doesn't just need to bake very well and make good cookies or donuts or whatever it is that they're making. They actually need to be a good business owner and run a, a good business. And so that is a totally different skill apart from baking, right? So that I think is, is a really, really important part to understand. And so that used to require an executive MBA, right? That's usually what you used to you used to need in order to get that information. Now that knowledge is out there <clears throat> through masterminds, through groups, online, you know, programs and, and Facebook groups. And so the great thing is, is that I can't I can't recommend a, a group other than mine. Obviously, you know, if you if you are looking to build an agency and util or and or utilize messenger marketing through that, right? You know, at least specifically, that's what my content is geared for. Now, if you're if you are looking to, well, I get I guess get clients online, right? But but other than that, I think what's really really important is for you to find a group and find a community that you drive with, right? Because no matter 
that the information is going to be wrapped up. It's going to be similar in all of the the diff, you know in all the kind of the different places, right? You'll find similar information. What the differentiation in any of these programs is is what is the community like? What's the support like? What is the what is the mentorship actually like? Right? Is that something that you is is that right? And I think that that is is super. Mm, just super important and really, really valuable for you to keep in mind when you are getting into any program. And that's also why, for me, it's so important for, for us to have a community, for us to be able to chat consistently and chat regularly. And I, as, even as I'm saying it, I'm like, damn, we need to get back to that a little bit more because that's what made us so strong and so dynamic. And that's, that's kind of gone away recently. So, um, Johnny... I appreciate your love, man. Did you, you, Johnny? You bet. You, if you're on the East Coast, guys, and um, you guys need to come out to Philly for our One Life Fully Lived event. It's uh, it's gonna be epic. So I'm gonna make some last minute tweaks here. So basically, what I would say, Daniel, is find a, do some searches, do some YouTube searches. The the good thing is, is that the the the, the right ones, right? The the great. The great ones will do a good job of being able to hook you into their funnel in in some sort of way, right? So it's like just start perusing and just start opening your eyes to this information. And it's like I wouldn't I wouldn't be ready to you know you don't have to have to have your credit card or or your debit card you know you don't have to pay anything in order to get started right at first. I would encourage you to not do that until you are absolutely ready you know to pull out the credit card because the best ones will provide ways for you to be able to get that content and get that information in a way that doesn't like like the best ones create free stuff and create ways for you to be able to get value from them without you having to pay and 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 the best ones still have value on the other side of it right so when you do pay there is a, a ton of value there and i and i think that that's you know that's really really important when you are choosing these these entrepreneurship programs because there's lots of people who will take your money but then all of a sudden you just get a bunch of videos and then you're on your own you're out in, on this boat trying to figure out shit on your own and that's that's no more helpful than than right when you started so that's what i would say about that daniel hopefully that that is a uh, a valuable answer for you <clears throat> guys if you guys have any other questions now is your chance to throw those down there i've been talking for let's see for questions we talked about oh so let's finish up right i've just been rambling for 20 some odd minutes the first one right the first thing we talked about was identifying your audience picking your niche picking your industry the second one was understanding and then the third one was reaching out and contacting them. And it's literally, you have, you have to find ways to, to do this. this. This is not something that happens on its own. If you just set up and you just decide that one day you're gonna provide services, no matter what those services are, you just decide that you're gonna provide services for people, right? Then that's great, that's fantastic, that's one step of the process. But now you have to actively go out there and be sharing that with people every single day. Every like it is it is it it is your full time job to be a salesperson at the very very beginning. So you've got to go out there and create systems, whether those are automated through email, whether those are automated through LinkedIn, whether those are automated somehow through a chatbot because you got them on your chatbot list, whether those are done through a VA, whether you are calling them, whether you are messaging them. Yeah, I, I remember when we sort of started our agency, I was literally spending a couple of hours every single day cold texting, cold messaging. Um, we even cold called, right? We would message them and then we would go through and everybody who didn't respond, we would go, we would call them. And, uh, it was just, it was a, it was a grind, but it was a necessary grind to get rolling, right? Because we, we weren't just going to sit there with our thumb in our, you know, excuse me, with our thumb up our butt, uh, and, uh, and wait for people to contact us. Like we just, I, in being in business, as long as I have, I know that that's just not how it works. So, um, Daniel, awesome. Thanks for doing, uh, for being around, man. Uh, those of you guys who are here, if you guys made it this far and you're on live, let me know. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Love to see that Daniel's out there in, uh, in Spain. That's awesome, man. 
Um, that's huge. Uh, I'd love to know where the Millennial Skills brand is going. And, and of course, guys, always the likes and the loves, those things always help. Uh, so if you guys get any value out of these or any of the other videos, I um, appreciate you doing that. If you guys want the guide, okay, it's, it's currently getting crowd edited, right? We actually have John's in, in Vegas. Awesome. Daniel's out in Barcelona. I love that. Okay. So now I've got some places um, that I can uh, can visit. So we're going to be, we're going to definitely one day be doing millennial skill meets up, meetups around the world. So the more community that we build, uh, the better that this thing is going to be for everybody. And our, our mission, you know, is really to help a thousand digital marketers create the business and the life of their dreams. And uh, we want to do that through, both through training and then also the tools that, uh, that you need as well. So if you guys want that guide, it's how to get clients without running Facebook ads. It's getting crowd edited right now. So uh, we've got a, a bunch of people who are going through it and combing it for any airs and it's kind of scary, but they're going to be doing it. Um, if you want that, as soon as it's finished, just drop an emoji and I will follow up with you and get you all the goods uh, from that as well. All right, guys. Hopefully have an, an amazing one and uh, talk soon. Get better today.